Hello everybody and welcome to another CSV Getter Guide. In this video, we're going to be talking all about authorization bearer tokens, what they are and how they work and how to use them. So essentially an authorization bearer token is basically a password that you need to give an API in order to get the data as it returns. So I'm going to give you a little example of that now. So I'm going to use CSV Getter to quickly spin up an API which is going to return this data. Basically, the country codes for phones in the United Kingdom and the United States. So I select the sheet from my Google Drive. I'm selecting sheet one. I'm going to call this country codes. There's the data, and we want it to be JSON, so I change the format to JSON. And then here is my API route. So in Postman, if you're not familiar with Postman, it's a great app for testing APIs. It basically behaves like a web browser. You can create new tabs, you can enter URLs, but instead of getting web pages, obviously APIs return data and JSON, so it's fantastic for viewing said JSON. And as you can see, our API route now returns that country data in, uh, in that format. And we're getting a 200 without any request headers because this is a completely open API endpoint which is basically saying that we do not require an authorization bearer token. And I'm going to show you what that example looks like in Python as well. So in Python, uh, basically I'm importing the requests library. Uh, you can install this using pip install requests. And uh, the URL is the, UR the API route that I created using CSV getter. Now I'm just using a simple line of code here. It's a get request. Uh, and once we got the data from the API route, we're not going to do anything with it except print it. So Python token example, if I run that, you'll see that we just get the printed data. I'm actually going to show you something else to illustrate the point. So you can see what's happened here is I'm now re printing response.status code, and that's the code that comes back with the response. So the text is obviously the data in text format, and the status code is basically the code that we can see in Postman here. Now these codes basically indicate um, how the, res the request has gone. So a 200 means everything's gone OK, and you're looking for 200 requests when you're dealing with APIs. Now, there are other codes to indicate that stuff has either gone wrong or that you're not allowed access. So I'll explain those as we go through the video. But really, you're looking for a 200 if you want to make sure that your, your, um, your data is being returned. And if you're programming with APIs it's good, and you want to look out for errors and catch stuff that goes wrong, then it's always good. You can check response status code equals 200 to make sure everything's gone OK. So if I run this code, you can see that the status code is a 200 along with the data. Now we're going to turn this API into a locked endpoint. Now we can do that with CSV getter. So I can enable auth here and add an authentication header. So I'm just going to call it example, but it's always good to do something quite secure. There's quite a few characters, maybe just a jumble of letters. You want to create a really secure auth header to make sure that your, your API is secure. And now we basically are dealing with an API which requires a bearer token, which is the whole point of this video. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. First thing in Postman, if we press send, you can see that the status of the request is 401 unauthorized. And we're, be, we're getting an error telling us that we cannot use this API without an auth header. Now, just to show you what that looks like in Python, let's do the same thing. Yep, so the text we get back is an error, and we get a 401 error. Now, the nice thing about Postman is an authorization, you can do it really nicely with this UI. You can choose bearer token. Now, a lot of APIs require bearer token, and in the attached guide to this blog video, we're talking specifically about bearer token. The format that these go for is you want to add a header to your API request, which is bearer, space, and then your token. And the nice thing about Postman is it does it automatically for you. So here, I'm typing an example as the token. And when I re-perform re the request, you can see that everything works out all right. So bearer token has been added. But really what's happened here is that Postman has added the authorization header for us, and it's bearer space and then our token. So that's how you add bearer tokens to API requests. And I'll show you that now in the Python code. So what's changed in this code? Well, now I've just find um, 
a data body called headers, and I've added the authorization header as bearer example. Now you'll see that this, here's headers and postman, you'll see this for, follows the exact same format, capital B on bearer, space, and then your actual token. Now these tokens will always kind of look like a messy jumble of letters. It's not gonna be just a simple thing like example. I've just kept it simple for this video. Now, if we re-perform this request, you can see that request, request, and we get URL, and then we add an additional parameter called headers, and there's loads of additional parameters you can add to request. So it's good to specify that headers is equal to headers here. And if we re-perform here, you can see that the data comes through. Now, if you came through the attached guide on CSV Getter, we have a copy of this code here, which shows you what it's like to input a request header into an API request like this. And if you have any questions for us about either this guide or CSV Getter, feel free to get in touch with us at info at csvgetter.com. Um, and we're happy to do more Python examples like this, more general tech examples if you found this video useful. So if there's any feedback on that front, please give it a like, give it a comment, and let me know how we did. Okay, thank you for watching.